Greetings, Jills and Jacks. This is Matt Harpatrick. With a certain animation company that made a certain habit of making sequels we don't actually want, yet finally announced the worthy sequels. Yeah! I figure it only makes sense to talk about that certain sequel's predecessor before I get to see the follow-up in the future. Released in 2011, DreamWorks Animation made an anime spin-off based on the Shrek character, Puss in Boots. When he first appeared in Shrek 2, he gained a massive popularity and became a beloved character as Shrek, Donkey, and Fiona. Not only did he receive an upcoming sequel, but also an anime short called The Three Diablos and a Netflix TV series. The spin-off movie was originally going to be a directed dvd movie, much like the Disney directed dvd sequels, calling it Puss in Boots, the story of an ogre killer. But due to market conditions and DreamWorks wanting to do more to the feline cat, the film got reinstated to a theatrical release. Welcome to another episode of the One Reviews. Now everyone, pray for mercy from Puss in Boots. The movie is meant as an origin story about Puss in Boots, once again played by Antonio Banderas, as a fearsome outlaw. He goes on a quest to find some magic beans so he can get the golden eggs from the giant's castle to repay his debt and restore his honor. In order to complete his mission, he will need help from a girl cat named Kitty Sawpaws, played by Salma Hayek and his childhood friend Humpty Dumpty, voiced by Zach Galifianakis. I'll say this right now, this spin-off is pretty different from any of the other Shrek adventures. It's surprisingly a serious anime adventure. Think of it as an Indiana Jones meets Zorro-style movie. It becomes a fun treasure hunting story on the goal to unlock the giant's castle to retrieve the golden eggs, or the golden goose, while also learning the secrets behind the legend. That's because it does deliver what it promises. The movie is about Puss in Boots. It explains how Puss in Boots became the beloved cat hero we know from how he got his boots and why he wears them to his loyal behavior towards other characters. In other words, the movie does succeed as a spin-off, which also makes it a good, adventurous, character-driven story. As it is a movie based on a Shrek character, there are still some fairy tale spoofs in there like Jack and the Beanstalk, Jack and Jill, and a few others. Although it's not as prominent as the first two Shrek films, but the satire of these familiar fairy tales are still fresh, creative, and expands the world building of the Shrek universe. Even if you haven't seen any of the four main movies, you can still follow through the whole story easily and understand the idea that it's a fairy tale spoof. Speaking of which, the humor is okay. Sometimes they can be funny, but other times they can fall flat. And believe me, if I hear one more egg pun, I'm gonna hit myself against a stone wall. I'll tell you this. My friend, it ain't over easy. Even though Shrek is nowhere to be found in the spin-off, the characters are still likable and three-dimensional. They each present their own unique twists of their respective fairy tale or nursery rhyme, much like the previous characters from the other films. Starting with Puss in Boots himself, he's the protagonist that wants to clear his name for a crime he didn't commit. While he's being seen as a fugitive from others like the head of the guards, he does continue to fight for justice wherever he goes. But in order to reclaim his heroism, he has to pay his debt by stealing the magic beans from Jack and Jill, two tough and murderous outlaws that want their greedy hands on the golden eggs. The other cat, Kitty Sawpaws, is also an interesting character. She may have a bit of the love interest role, but she has a tragic past on why she was given the name. Plus, she is capable to quietly snatch anything without making a single sound. There is also Humpty Dumpty, Puss's old friend from the orphanage that is responsible for the cat's outlaw says. However, he claims that he wants to help Puss to clear his name by fulfilling their childhood dream of getting the golden eggs from the beanstalk. As much as I don't like his egg jokes, he's still an interesting character thanks to Zack's performance as a genius planner, inventor, and remains shady on whether or not he wants to make up to Puss over what he did. This results in showing Puss's connection on both the egg character and perspective of their hometown from the past and present. Puss wants to help his home and not disappoint Amilda, the woman who took care of Puss at the orphanage, while Humpty says he doesn't fit in in San Ricardo and believes he belongs in the giant castle with the golden eggs. The only flaw I would have with the characters is that there's not many characters compared to the other films, but with the characters we do have, they do make the most of it, including Antonio Banderas capturing the spirit of Puss in Boots, and Salma Heia as Kitty being the sneaky and risky cat. Since the movie is meant as a spin-off, the animation continues to capture the spirit of the Shrek movies. Some of it is the same, but some of it is different, yet continues to look amazing. When it comes to the character design, all the original and fairy tale characters still belong in the Shrek universe. They have unique features and their own personalities that share the same creativity as the other fairy tale characters from the other movies. 
With the character animation, they fully display what they can do. It presents some amazing cat-like agility, sword fighting, and some dance montages that can be fun to watch. Which also makes the action scenes awesome, filled with creative scenarios on how the character would go through some chase scenes and other brawls. And although the desert-like backgrounds don't share the same colorful environments as Shrek's Swamp or Far Far Away, for what it is, it does look nice. You have San Ricardo as a town with some red, orange, and gold colors around it, and the Giant's Castle is a castle where everything is huge compared to those who enter, surrounded by clouds that people talk in a high-pitched voice. Come on in! It feels great! The animation is not the same art style as it was with the four main films, but it still feels like we're still in the Shrek universe with no Ruffle Stilson style contract timeline whatsoever. And that's what we want to see in a fairy tale spoof, it's to explore what's beyond the swamp and other kingdoms with a few surprises and twists. Now, I've seen spin-offs prior to 2011 that did not hold up well like Planet Sheen and All Grown Up, but this spin-off was fun for all the right reasons. The 2011 Puss in Boots movie is a fun action-packed anime movie based on a beloved Shrek character. While some of the egg puns are bad and there isn't a lot of characters in it, but with the characters we have are still likable, the animation is spectacular, it maintains the fairy tale satire we remember from the Shrek franchise, and the story succeeds as an origin story of the outlaw cat. Shrek fans will definitely have a blast with it, but if you're looking for an action movie like Zorro, Indiana Jones, and the Adventures of Tintin, then you will like this. It may not be the best movie out of all the Shrek movies, but it's way better than the last two films from the series. Puss in Boots is definitely the hero that not only restore honor to his name, but the anime franchise he originated from. I'm going to give the spin-off movie a B+. I'm Matt Harrow Patrick. now if you excuse me, after seeing a cat cosplay as Zoro, it's my turn to get into costume for a certain month coming soon. Thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed this, check out these other videos, or feel free to like, comment, and subscribe for more upcoming reviews and other projects. I'll see you soon.